We have an update now on that medical story that we told you about on Monday, the dwindling supply of life-saving cancer drugs for children. It's part of a larger shortage of cancer medications, and Dr. John LaPook is here to tell us what's happened since that first report. John? Scott, there's been significant progress in the last 48 hours. As the, few, as the Food and Drug Administration, Congress, and drug manufacturers have all been scrambling to come up with a solution. The lives of thousands of children with leukemia, like eight-month-old Elena Schoenfeld, are at stake. Today, the FDA told CBS News it believes the shortage of the chemotherapy drug methotrexate will be averted. Three companies that produce the drug are stepping up production, and a fourth, which stopped producing it last fall, will release its emergency supplies. Senator Amy Klobuchar is pushing bipartisan legislation to beef up the FDA's power to prevent shortages like this in the future in part by requiring drug companies to alert the government when supplies are low. But the legislation has been languishing in Congress. I just wish some of my colleagues would meet some of these little kids uh, with no hair who've been through treatment and are surviving, but then find out in the middle that there may not be a drug available for them the next day. This is not the time where we start talking about the procedural rules of the Senate. There's got to be a way to get it done. The proposed legislation should help, but it leaves a key question unaddressed. How to give drug companies incentives to prevent shortages from happening in the first place when generic drugs like methotrexate have low profit margins? One anecdote, there's been no shortage of the expensive cancer drug Avastin, which is still patent protected and costs about $80,000 a year. John, thanks very much.